that whenever you are putting your money in the stock market you are doing it with the understanding that hey i don't need this money for 5 years netflix subscription is not just 600 700 rupees it's a lot more money because a it takes out 600 700 rupees every single month out of your account second you do not get to invest that money into different instrument so it becomes a problem for you hi everyone welcome to today's video so on today's video i am going to answer five specific practical finance questions that impact you on everyday basis because every day i get questions like that akshar i'm planning on buying an iphone should i do it i'm planning on buying a new house should i do it how much money should i be saving for retirement should i be entering the equity markets right now or should i not be entering the equities market right now when do i get to know that i have become rich and when should i stop working so these are everyday finance points that impact you and knowing the answers will help you make better choices on day to day basis because the small habits that you will inculcate and execute on everyday basis that is going to define your overall financial well being not like 10 15 year 20 year goal and all that stuff being practical understanding these practical points is going to be super important hence this video so please watch it till the end and also press the like button so that this video reaches out to lot more people and makes them more financially aware so before we jump into the five specific points a very big shout out to our sponsors for today which is wint wealth they are an excellent bond investing platform you can check out the platform they list well researched and well studied bonds and depending on your risk appetite you could decide to invest in the bond market through wint wealth so let us get the video started and let me answer the first key question that people usually ask me that hey should i be buying asset x now x can be anything it can be iphone it can be car it can be house it can be a bike etc etc so there are a few key points that you must remember about this question point number 1 and an easy point to envision this is that if you cannot afford to buy something twice do not even try to buy it once why because there are numerous reasons for this think about electronics once you buy a 50 60 70 1000 rupee iphone you will feel really bad if you have to downgrade your phone from an iphone to something else so this is the first key problem that we will face second these days electronic items are designed to fail after certain number of years they are not designed to last forever so for example buy any phone and tell me in the comment box now how long would phones typically last they will not last more than like 4 5 years almost all of us would change our phones in that time frame so the important point or the key takeaway for you is that if you are deciding to buy something if you can easily afford to buy it you can buy it two three times four times easily easily without getting into emis all that stuff okay to buy it not an issue so so this is the first key implementable practical point the second key practical point that i have spoken about on my previous videos is that consider if a purchase is an asset or a liability asset simply means that you can make money from it it allows you to get money into your pocket that is an asset so for example if you are using your phone an expensive phone that you have purchased to make like youtube videos it becomes a part of your income generation system then it's okay it's probably okay to buy it but on the flip side you're just buying a phone to show off then it's probably a liability why because it is taking money out of your pocket so decide things in terms of asset versus liability a third related very practical point is that please sleep on it For example if you are really excited about buying an iPhone you understand that you might have to undertake some financial debt to purchase that thing but still you are hung up on buying it then just sleep on it don't buy it for one week and see and then also if that itch is there that okay i have to buy it then go ahead and buy it but at least through this mechanism you will avoid impulse purchases now whenever i speak about this topic i always get a counter question that akshat i am from a middle class and i am looking to purchase a house so do these rules still apply to me so yes they do somewhat apply to you but you need to curate this rule a little bit For example a house of course you cannot afford to buy twice or thrice from that perspective and you should not be contextualizing this rule to buy a house because house is an investment in majority of the cases it's not an expense expense per se now this is not a recommendation from my side for you to go and buy a house i am just telling you how to contextualize this rule to different purchases so in case of a house you need to take a look at the roi matrix or return on investment matrix of a house how much would the asset grow by how much rental yield will grow by which city are you purchasing are there growth prospects in that city etc etc so, so you need to compute that roi matrix for that house of course in many cases we just simply purchase a house not because of some roi but because of emotional decisions and certain circumstances in our life and that is completely okay i cannot factor that into a model and tell you a solution there so you need to make a customized decision under such circumstances 
but i hope you get the picture that what type of assets to buy when to buy it when to avoid it and how to contextualize it to different assets that you are considering purchasing now the second most important everyday finance point that you need to understand is that hey when should i be investing in the stock market because i just got my salary i am super excited to invest but i see the markets are high or markets are low or markets are going sideways should i invest right away my money in the stock market so you are asking the wrong question what you need to understand is that you should only get into the stock market if your holding period is 5 years why am i saying it let me show you a couple of examples to illustrate that point so let us pick the example of hdfc bank and take a look at this period from 2012 to approximately 2014 so two year period hdfc bank moved sideways and it did not give any returns then again take a look at this particular period from october 2010 to roughly 2012 again hdfc bank did not give any return then take the recent period which is the from november or december 2020 to roughly now right 2022 again two year period hdfc bank did not give much returns what is the story that i am trying to tell you the story i am trying to tell you is that even with great stocks like hdfc bank which is the leading bank in india there are periods when you will get zero return for 2 3 4 5 years also so therefore having control of that holding period is very very important for you now let me show you another example from reliance industry and this one is even scarier so if you go to roughly 2008 right the stock was trading at 652 and then till 2018 it was still trading at roughly the same levels so a 10 year period and you got zero returns on a stock like reliance which is one of the top 5 stocks consistently in terms of market cap in india so we are not talking about some penny stock or some average stock and one of india's biggest companies if they are not giving shareholder return for one year two year or even 10 year windows then what is the central message that you can take away the central message that you need to take away is you should have holding power in the stock market and whatever money you are pouring into the stock market you should be able to put it for at least 5 years because in a 5 year window it has been generally seen that a good stock will always give you opportunities to book some profit but if you are extremely hyper that you know what i need to make money in one year two year then probably stock market is not the place for you i keep on getting like comments that aksha you, you spoke about like hul and hul is not moving it has hardly been 6 7 months and we have undergone two crises right now and hul has fallen by like 10% and people are creating ruckus so please go and understand all this history of different stocks hul is not an exception here any good stock will go through this type of crisis if you do not trust the business if you are just looking for price movement to make money then stock market is not the place for you so this is the first central point that you must remember in terms of investing in the stock market that whenever you are putting your money in the stock market you are doing it with the understanding that hey i don't need this money for 5 years so as the next point you must understand that there are three critical steps involved in order for you to get into the stock market because these days the hawa is that you know when you are 12 years old you should start investing in the stock market or when you have just joined nursery you should start investing in the stock market no that is not the point please remember these three specific points one is that please build your emergency fund emergency fund means that hey if there are some unforeseen expenses for example a medical emergency has come up or if you lost your job for some reason then how will you survive so this is the survival money and this should be 6 to 12 times your monthly expenses so please get this done first this is the first key thing that you must do second have some liquid money at play for example let's imagine that you have to do your mba after 2 years then you can't put that money in the stock market for example if the stock market is a little bit mellow and you need that money to pay your mba expenses what will you do so you will get stuck so that money is termed as liquid money that you absolutely need for achieving certain goals and you can't put that money in the stock market or crypto market you can put this money in fixed deposits which is a type of a bond or you can scout for different bond investment options you could also check out wind wealth and if it fits your risk profile you can consider taking some positions in it or you can scout for several other different types of bonds that you can purchase i have already made specific videos dedicated on the bond market so you can go and check it out then comes the stage that okay once the emergency funds are done liquid money is done and goal based planning is done then comes money that you don't need which you want to put for long term growth 
This is where investing in stock markets, crypto markets, other growth investment options come into the picture. So the important point is that please get done with these two steps first and then move on to the third step. There is no race going on here that you need to get financially free by 22 and all that, right? It's not a race. Please don't take it as a race. Just follow sensible decision making along the way and you will see financial freedom. Now, the third question that I keep on getting is that Akshat, I want to retire early. I have just joined nursery and I want to retire very, very early. Okay, I'm just kidding. So I get a lot of questions that okay i want to retire very very early what is the estimate or the golden rule that i should have in mind so please remember this particular spectrum it is a wonderful spectrum it will help you understand that your retirement depends on your expenses if you are expensing 100% of your salary and saving 0% and investing 0% then you will have to forever work you will not be able to retire ever for example even when you are 75 and making 30 million dollars a year but your expenses are 30 million dollars a year then guess what you will have to work the next year also on the flip side even if you are making hundred dollars a month but your expenses are zero percent and if you have figured out a way to live for free forever then you can retire literally now but the real life does not exist here it does not exist here it exists somewhere on the spectrum so how much money do you typically need in order to retire and let me just help you clarify the definition of retirement it does not mean that you stop working completely it simply means that you do not need to work for money anymore you have already built a big enough corpus your expenses are under control. You have invested it in a way that is making sense. And now you can live an independent life and you do not need to bother about money, money per se. So in the real world on this spectrum, it is calculated that if you can save 70% or more of your salary for a period of 10 years, then you can potentially retire. Now there are a couple of conditions to this. The first key point is that you should not undertake any lifestyle inflation. It simply means that if you are living in a 2 BHK, your monthly expenses are 15,000 rupees. It stays 15,000 rupees forever not adjusting for inflation, just talking in real terms. Second key point is the 5%, 4% rule. So what does this mean? It simply means that you are investing your money at a real rate of return of 5% and your withdrawal rates are 4%. So let me build on this point and clarify this very, very quickly. That in India, you can easily grow your money by 12%. For example, if you simply do passive index investing, you can grow your money by 12%. This is what the history tells us. If you pick 20 years return, of nifty 50 it is 12.2 percent so in india you can grow your wealth at roughly 12 percent now in india the inflation can be around eight percent also so what becomes your real growth rate it becomes five percent right so this is what i meant by five percent here so this is the rate at which you're growing your money so your entire corpus whatever you have saved by following this particular rule you have created a nest and this nest let's assume it to be one crore now if this nest keeps on growing at five percent real rate and you withdraw it at four percent real rate then you're not touching this money anymore so this is the simple concept behind retirement just follow these few basic points that number one please focus on your expenses please do not escalate your expenses too much that's point number one point number two save your salary 70 percent of more for a period of 10 years if you hit that point that's a great time for you to retire and not think about money anymore third invest your surplus whatever money you are able to save at 12 percent interest rate and withdraw four percent of your money for expenses thereafter so i hope that this complicated retirement math is understood through these three four basic points now comes the fourth question that I often get that Akshat, when will I be financially independent? So financially independent means that you are not stressed about the money. On the previous point, I was saying that, hey, you are completely free. You are not bothered about money anymore. Here in financially independence, you are not stressed about money anymore. You don't have to continue running the race at a very fast, brisk pace that, okay, you know what? I have to work at like 18 hours a day, 15 hours away. I'm super bothered. I'm super stressed about my work. I can't do a job switch. All this stuff is called as financial independence and modern times so when can you be financially independent here there are two critical points that you need to remember first critical point that unless you separate your needs from wants you will never be financially independent because there is no end to greed if today you are making two crore rupees a year and your expenses turn out to be approximately two crore then guess what next year again you will have to make two crore rupee so you are getting into a rat race it is called as turning of the hamster wheel so a hamster is an animal that keeps on running in its cage moving that wheel so you become like this this is literally the classic definition of today's version of rat race so please separate your needs from wants spend money on things that are needed for example if you want to compound your skill set that money is needed. Grow it. If you want to do your MBA, 
okay fine spend that money it is needed not a problem if you want to buy a house subsequently do it not a problem not the end of the world but if you undertake unnecessary expenses then yeah you can continue to make crores and crores you will still be financially bothered this is the first key principle a related point here is that you must always look to avoid your recurring expenses now how does the math add up let me quickly explain that by telling you a very simple story so i try to be physically fit but i do not have a lot of time to go to gym and all that so a few years back i joined the gym i paid like a gym membership and guess how many times did i go to the gym i probably went for like 5 days i paid like 6 months of gym membership fees and that was a recurring fees right i mean if i would have stayed on that treadmill that hey go to gym to build your fitness it's just a nightmare because it's a recurring fee for me i am not getting any benefits from it so i changed my system of physical fitness altogether so i said to myself that you know what there is just no point in going to the gym i just need to figure out an alternate method so i started doing hit exercises at home and i'm very happy with it it requires less of my time i can do it more actively i can do it more regularly and i also do not need to undertake that useless expense of spending money on gym it doesn't work for me it might work for you so gym might be a great option for you but it definitely was not a good option for me but what i'm trying to tell you through this story is that whenever recurring expenses are there that okay hey, pay your gym membership after every 6 months all that stuff be very very mindful because there are two things at play one is that if you are able to save that recurring expense that is not working for you it could be netflix subscription it could be magazine subscriptions just do away with it because it permanently saves that money for you forever for example in my case i'm never even going to spend 1 rupee on gym memberships so that is point one that permanent benefits are there second is that whatever money you are saving you get to invest that into different instruments and that leads to more benefits so there are dual benefits of cutting these recurring expenses so look very closely and cut out these recurring expenses they eat a lot without even you realizing it Netflix subscription is not just 600 700 rupees it's a lot more money because a it takes out 600 700 rupees every single month out of your account second you do not get to invest that money into different instrument so it becomes a problem for you so bottom line is that please separate your needs from wants and avoid recurring expenses part b is that please learn to invest and invest your money almost 80% people that i meet do not invest their money and it's a huge problem now you can invest in bonds you can invest in passive funds you can invest in stock markets but please invest if you're not investing inflation will eat away all your money now comes the fifth and final point that akshat i want to be rich but i don't know the definition of rich how would you define being rich and when can i call myself to be rich and wealthy so here's a tweet that i made and it's a very interesting tweet it encapsulates one of the philosophies that was outlined by fredrik nietzsche and he was a german philosopher and he quoted something wonderful and i'm paraphrasing here so he said that people in this world fall in two categories slave and free so people who control two third of their time are free people and people who do not control their time are slaves and if you look around in the world people can be extremely money rich and they are extremely extremely time poor everyone that you meet they might have money but they definitely are not time rich and that is a component that you must focus on in order to live a quality life and if you have 10 EMIs running on your head if you have 50 credit cards and all are being maxed out then you can never have that life why because you got into those 10 EMIs and 50 credit cards because you over purchased something you did not separate your needs from wants you are defining your life by purchasing more and more and more and consuming more and more without giving it a thought and guess what technically yes you are owning a lot of stuff but practically that stuff is owning you because every month you have to spend your time which is a very limited commodity in order to pay for that stuff so the bottom line is that you must cultivate good habits and you must make good decisions how much you earn is secondary how much you save and invest is the primary thing that you must focus on and if you have good habits if you have good understanding good rational of why you are buying something versus not if you are thoughtful in your approach if you are prudent with your time you will live a rich and a wonderful life i hope you enjoyed the video and i will see you tomorrow